In this video, I'll show you how you can build your own custom dashboard. When we go to a customized high level at the agency level, you'll see this dashboard. You'll see this dashboard. It includes new contacts created. We can sort by coverage rate, speed, delete one value, stuff like that. Then there's a map showing all our locations. This is something you can actually embed into a specific location, which means you can create a custom dashboard component that shows up right on the standard dashboard. You can embed whatever information you want, tables, charts, anything, because the reporting built into high level is pretty limited, especially since there's no reporting at the agency level. Let's get into how you can actually build this. Basically, here's the structure. At the top, we have high level or GHL, which holds all of the data we need, contacts, messages, opportunities, and more. This is actually why this page takes a while to load. When it loads, we're pulling out all that data from high level, then compiling, chopping, and filtering it so we get the key metrics. We can also calculate changes from the previous period. All this is calculated from raw data, message types, opportunity values, and statuses, and so on. To view this data the way we want, we need to compile it and store it in a more accessible form. For that, we need our own separate database. I use Superbase, which is a Postgrade database, but you can use whatever you prefer. This database mirrors GHL so that we can have all the data in a highly accessible format. High-level data is accessible only via API and webhooks, which are slow and have rate limits. That's not ideal for dashboards. If you keep clicking around, you might hit your limit and be unable to load more data. That's why we want our own database, to store and query only the data we care about, optimized for speed. There are two main ways to do this, and you need to use both, the API and webhooks. The API is for backfilling data, that is, bringing in historical data before the dashboard is added. Each of your locations has a bunch of contacts, messages, and opportunities that you want to pull in so you can see historical data right away. On the other hand, the webhook captures new data in real time, like when a contact is created or a message goes out. To start, you need to create a high-level app. Go to marketplace.gohighlevel.com, create an account, and create an app. Once the app is created, make sure it has all the correct permissions. This app has every single read-only permission because if you later need to add more, you'd have to uninstall and reinstall the app, which is a hassle. So select all the permissions at the start to save time later. We've got read-only access for opportunities, contacts, and messages. We also turn on webhooks for these actions. Contact created, deleted, updated, tagged, and for inbound and outbound messages. These are sent to our webhook URL, and we can see these events show up in our logs. Each event includes location ID, app ID, and basic information about the message, which we then enrich by calling the API. That's the first step, catching the webhooks and turning them into data we can store. Our webhook receiver logs the incoming data, checks for installs and uninstalls, and then processes messages. If the app isn't a premium one, we skip saving messages. If it is, we save the message by running a function that links the contact, user, and conversation to the message. Then, we call the API to get the full message data, because webhook data can be incomplete, and insert it into the database. That covers when the app is already installed and running. The next step is backfilling all data when the app is first installed. When a location is installed, we also install the company and then associate the locations. Then we backfill the data. We get the access token, pull all pipelines and pipeline stages, and insert those into the database. Next, we pull every contact in that location. This is essential because you want the dashboard to display data immediately rather than waiting for new data to trickle in. We use the API to get all contacts in pages of 100, which is slow, another reason APIs aren't great for this. In contrast, our own database can return thousands of contacts at once. For each contact, we store it in the database, then make another API call to get additional contact info.
We also get all opportunities and conversations linked to each contact. Under each contact, there are conversations and under each conversation, there are messages. So we retrieve all conversations and all message histories and compile those into a format suitable for the database. This is a lot of work and honestly, it's the hardest part, mirroring high levels data into your own database. But once this is done, building the dashboard becomes relatively easy. The dashboard might have a map at the top, numbers in the middle, and a table at the bottom. You can build it however you want, using Looker Studio or anything else. In my case, I'm using Radix UI via ShadCN to generate the UI components. On the ShadCN website, you'll find various components. For instance, I use their calendar to implement a date range picker in the dashboard. I didn't build it from scratch, just assembled it using ShadeCN. We use Superbase SDK to access data, TanStack React table from ShadeCN for the table, Vercel Analytics, Mapbox, Next.js as the JavaScript framework, Trigger.dev for the backfilling logic I just showed, and Tailwind CSS for styling. Once your database is ready, laying out the dashboard is straightforward. We have a route like dashboard.companyid where the company ID dynamically fills in. We load the relevant data and render it in the overview section, which includes a map, total locations, active locations, and a data table. Here's what our database query looks like. We define a current and previous period with start and end dates and run the same query for both. From the location underscore data table, we get the location info, check installation status, retrieve contacts, messages, and opportunities for both periods, and then manipulate the data. Every time the dashboard loads, it's a bit slow because this query isn't optimized yet and because the data manipulation is done server-side, which could be improved. It's fairly basic on the surface, but adding location-specific or user-specific pages isn't much harder since we already have all the necessary data. If you're using Zapier to catch data, I'm sorry, but that's not going to work long-term. You'll end up spending a fortune. You need something like AWS Lambda, or like I use, Vercel. Zapier gets expensive fast. 100,000 events per month could cost you $500. I spend maybe $20 with Vercel, so yes, do this with code. It's not only more affordable, but performance is also significantly better. This is really the only way to build a dashboard that can match or exceed the built-in ones in high level. If you want to personalize your own dashboard, the 14-day trial link is waiting for you in the description.